What's up folks, it's Dan here from VGameCharacter.com where we turn games into games and today we're going over balance and coordination. I feel like we've been uh, kind of favoring the more tank side of the uh, uh, fitness classes that we have on the blog with more weightlifting and stuff like that. So I wanted to bring it back and get a little more like rogue and fighter type stuff in as well. So today we're going to talk about balance and we're going to move from very basic to a little more advanced, okay? And we're only talking about balancing on feet today, not hand balancing. That's another subject on another day. Balance is an issue for some people. Not everyone, but a lot of people. And balance is also one of those things that you can continually improve even if you're already pretty good at it. And for most people, the furthest anybody goes in their balance practice in day-to-day -day life is just, you know, standing on one foot. Which, while it is a good introductory skill to have, it's not the only skill to have. And by working balance beyond just that, you can actually improve your quality of life overall. Much less chance of falling, for instance, which I always tell people when I'm training martial arts, I'm like, listen, most important thing to learn is how to balance and how to fall, because how many times are you actually going to get a fight in your life versus how many times are you going to fall down, you know? So working balance has a lot of good carryover benefits into just generally living, even if you're not using it for martial arts applications or other stuff like that, or Ninja Warrior for that matter. So to start off, we are going to start with just your simple stand on one foot balance, all right? If you are just starting off, don't worry about how high you pick your foot up. Get it slightly off the ground. Keep it close. If you've got that balance, it's really easy to do a little toe tap and get back down again and recenter yourself. And make sure you work both sides. Now, some tricks if you're first starting out on how to balance better on one foot. First off, pick a fixed point and stare at it. And not like right here at the ground. You want to pick something kind of far out in front of you. I'm just looking at the tripod. The camera's on right now. All right? I'm staring at you fine people. Hello. How you doing? But you want to pick one spot and focus in on it because you have to remember balance is dictated by your inner ear. So if you move your head, then you have a tendency to throw off your balance. And if you're moving your eyes, your head naturally follows. It's very hard to look somewhere without your head following it. On top of that, because your body coordinates things through both your ears and your eyes, if your eyes are moving, it's a lot harder to keep your balance than it is if you just have them one spot, even if you're keeping your head still. So when you're first starting out, pick a single spot, zone in, focus on it, all right? And once you're starting to get pretty good at that, you can start working on picking your leg up higher. This is going to throw your center of gravity off a little bit more because as you raise your leg up, if you get your leg down here, a lot of your weight is down low. If you get your leg up high, your weight comes up higher. Uh, and it males, the center of gravity is up around here somewhere, and females is down around here somewhere, okay? If you get your leg up higher, close to your center of gravity, you're on a much more spindly support down there. So by bringing your leg higher, you're going to work your balance better. Additionally, if you're using this for martial arts or Ninja Warrior type applications, anything like that, the ability to lift your leg high helps a lot, all right? With kicks, with getting over obstacles, stuff like that. So that's the next step is to raise your leg up higher. After that, we start going into hard mode. Remember I talked about zoning in on one spot? Now, you're going to pick your leg up and close your eyes. Now, as far as your hands go, you notice my hands are out to the side here. If you move your hands a lot, it's again going to throw off your center of gravity. So you want to make sure that you keep your hands still. If you look at uh, like tightrope walkers, especially old school tightrope walkers or those that are going across a ridiculous distance, they tend to use a big pole that they hold like this that keeps them centered on, on, on balance. What you want to do is you want to, when you're first starting out, keep your hands out like this. You don't have a giant pole to hold in your hands, but you shouldn't need it if you're just standing one foot. Later on, you can drop them to your side. You can start working your guard if you want, try and throw stuff from one side or whatever. But the idea here is you want to, when you're first starting out, keep your hands still, and then as you increase the difficulty level, you can work on moving your hands around. You work on juggling, you want to juggle, all right? So, first, toes close to ground, next, leg up high, next, eyes closed. After eyes closed, then you want to start working the exact opposite of what we were talking about, which was, don't move your head, don't move your eyes. Stand here, start looking around. Just move your head, move your eyes, look in one direction, look left, look right, get the crazy eyes going. All right? But start moving your head around. Observe your surroundings while you're standing on one foot, because... First off, situational awareness is always a good thing to practice. But secondly, by working this, you're actually coordinating your body and getting used to compensating, and you'll feel the muscles in your feet going and the muscles in your legs going. Another little trick, uh, trip, trick, tip, trip. You want to make sure that you have live knees, all right? That means don't lock your knee out like this. 
You want to have your knees slightly bent because that acts like a shock absorber for your body. So it's easier to keep your balance like that. Balance relies mostly on the muscles of your feet and particularly your toes. So keeping your weight a little forward onto the mid and or front of your foot also helps. So once you get to the point where you're standing on one leg with your, leg, with your other knee nice and high and your head moving around, whatever, you're kind of ready for more advanced stuff. And for that, you can bring in some equipment. Now this doesn't have to be crazy equipment. The only thing I've got here that costs any decent amount of money is this balance beam, but you don't have to have a balance beam, all right? I've just got this. You could have a two by four on two bricks. You know, it doesn't have to be crazy. That PVC pipe, I think, was eight bucks, maybe. And uh, this over here, you go check it out in my Parallettes construction video. I think I built them for like under $25 or whatever, and I made two of them, so, you know, whatever. So what you're gonna do after you move on from the standing on the leg, is you're gonna progress to a balance beam type setup, which again, can be a two by four or something like that. Now, one of the keys with a balance beam and with anything that you're walking across, even if you progress to, say, a tightrope or a slack rope or something like that, is you don't want to look at your feet. You might have that instinct at first, but you want to focus your gaze in front of you as you're walking. And when you first start out, you want to just practice looking in front and walking ahead. I have to apologize for the running nose. I don't know what's helping me today. You know what it is? I just cleaned in here. I think the dust is getting me. So you want to focus ahead of you, and you want to work on that one-footed balance. You want to make sure that you are braced and centered on one foot before you move the next one. If you start to have to compensate for loss of balance by taking steps, you're going to find yourself off balance and very quickly on your butt. So you want to focus first on, okay, I'm good here. I step up, I'm good here. The transition point is always the most dangerous point. When you have both feet on like this, this is, believe it or not, when it gets harder to balance. That's why we started with the standing one foot, because if you can stand on one foot on the ground, you can stand on one foot on a balance beam. As long as your whole foot fits on there, it might as well be solid ground, you know, outside of just mindset. But when you have both feet on, this is where it becomes difficult to balance. This is where all of a sudden you're having to counterbalance between two different brace points. And on top of that, you have narrowed your stance, you can't spread your weight out anymore. When you are working on your balance, especially on something like a balance beam or a tightrope, and I wish, I really wish I had a tightrope to demonstrate on here, just because tightrope is super fun. Unfortunately, I don't have a tightrope right now. We'll get there. But I want to show you from the front here what I'm talking about. When you're walking on anything, that is long and stable, like this, the time that you recalculate your balance, if you feel yourself starting to go, the way that you fix that is, counterintuitively, by taking a foot off, okay? Because now, you have three different appendages to try and correct your balance issues with. If you can move any three of these, you're used to standing on one foot already, and you just want to move them side to side until you get that balance. And you don't want to windmill wildly because that's what's going to make you fall. You need to be still and try and do controlled motion. So, oh, start to fall, start to fall, bring it back in, and we're good. Okay, now I take my next step, and so on. Now, this is kind of rudimentary on a low, wide beam like this, but as your structure that you're standing on gets more and more narrow, all the way up to, say, a tight rope, this becomes more and more important, all right? Slack lines too, even more challenging. But what you want to do when you're first starting out is just practice that walking and stopping. From there, you can move on to more challenging things like the dip. Step up, dip that toe down. And bend the knee that you're standing on so you're actually working something. It doesn't count if you just go, whoop. All right, you got to get low and dip like so. Then you can start working backwards. You don't have to work backwards with the dip, but if you want to challenge, go for it. And walking backwards, it's even more important to focus on straight ahead of you than walking forwards. And if you're on something that has a finite length to it, work on feeling that length with your foot. So that when you get to the end, like I am right now, you can feel it and you don't take a random step off and fall on your butt. Start with something low to the ground too. Don't start high. Don't be crazy. Not necessary. Start with something low to the ground. So once you feel as though you have mastered the balance means point, you can start working on other objects. 
Now, I like my parallel bar here just because it's low to the ground. So if you're learning, you don't have far to fall. You could also use like a railing on the fence or something like that, but uh, obviously not as safe. Now this is where, when you're working with things like this, this is where that whole balance is in the front foot comes into play. I don't want to have my heel on this, okay? If I have my heel on this, it's basically impossible for me to balance. If I try and stand up on this, it's going to be very difficult. But if I have my midfoot slash front foot, you want just like about the ball of your foot over the bar, you can compensate a lot better. Now, on this, as with this, the challenge is you need to keep your weight distributed evenly. So whether you're standing long ways, like this on it, Notice how I'm using my legs and my arms to control where I'm at. Or if you're standing short ways like this on it, both ways you need to have that gradual movement of the arms and legs to center your balance. It's a lot harder to stand on with two feet. This is a challenge, because now I only really have my upper body and my arms. If I stand up on one foot, look at this, see how I'm using the back of my foot here? I'll show it from the side the back of my foot, my back foot, my back leg there. See, I can use it to counterbalance my weight as I start to go until I find myself centered. Now again, start with something low to the ground. You don't even need something necessarily this high up. All right? But you do want something that's going to keep the thing that you're standing on from rolling. Don't start with just a piece of PVC lying, lying on the ground because unless you have it resting on something soft that's going to keep it from rolling somewhere, that'll make your job a billion times harder. Start with something small and thin, like uh, if you want to use, you can use a piece of wood like a, a 2 by 2 or something like that. And just work standing lengthwise and widthwise, all right? Either parallel or perpendicular to the structure you're standing on. All of these things, by the way, are just a matter of practice. Practice and strategy, yes, but once you know the strategy, it's just practice. Finally, we can move on to rolling and moving objects, such as a large PVC pipe like this, or if you've got it, and another thing that I wish I had that I don't have yet, a circus ball. Have you ever seen like a big circus ball? They're so much fun. They're a really good time. One of my favorite things that I learned how to do, all right? But with something that moves, the key is you need to move too. At least until you get very, very, very good at it. If you try and stay stationary on an object that moves like this, you're going to fall. That's it. Especially on something like a circus ball or a large piece of PVC pipe that has a tendency to roll anyway. If it's something that moves a little bit, like maybe something a little wee wobbly, you might be able to stabilize it, but this or a circus ball, the key is small movements. Control the movement. If I stand up and just try and stand on this, all right, notice how it's weeble wobbling, but if I control it with my feet, I can get the idea of where it's going to go a little bit better. And I can direct it. See how I got this little weeble wobble going here? That is intentional. That's something I'm doing. If I try and stand still, here, I'll, I can't, it's very hard. I can't even stand still naturally on this. If I try and stand still, that's going to happen. I'm going to overcompensate the first time it starts to move, and I'm going to go down. But if I stand up, again, starting on midfoot, just behind the ball of the foot, if I stand up and I'm starting off knowing it's going to move, and I focus on moving it intentionally rather than letting it move unintentionally and having to compensate, I keep my balance much better on it. It goes for if you're trying to stand on it, it goes for if you're trying to walk on it. Although walking on something like this that's going to move is very, very difficult. Yeah, no, that's not happening today. <laughs> if, I had, uh, if I had my rollers out here, I could show you, but that's more of a uh, uh, coordination and movement drill rather than a balance drill. So we're going to save that for a different video just like with the hand balancing. But this is kind of the final level that you're going to move to with static balance at least. This and up on a uh, uh, circus ball if by some chance you have access to a circus ball. Circus ball 
even though I don't have a demo, I will talk about it a little bit here. The idea with a circus ball is similar to that. That one I control the movement because it's in one direction. I just can just laterally go back and forth with my feet. On a circus ball, what you actually have to do is you have to take little steps. You can take little steps because remember the ball can roll everywhere. So you get up on the ball and you step in different directions and you can control which way it goes and you get a feel for it. So that's something else entirely. And once you get really, really good at it, you can get to the point where you can stop and stand still on it, at least for a period of time. But that's it. So basic progressions from standing on foot all the way to standing on a piece of PVC pipe that's rolling on the ground. So let me know if you like this, if you want more content along these lines as well as the work, workout stuff. I got a whole bunch more of this stuff. I've done like, I have not competed on Ninja Warrior the show, but I've done tons of Ninja Warrior type stuff. Um, unfortunately, a lot of my equipment is defunct. We're now building it in this space, but my old equipment is all out in the backyard and it's falling apart now. But I also took circus arts in college. I was lucky enough to go to a college where that was an elective. How about that, huh? So I know how to do, like, you know, the tightrope walking and all kinds of different balancing drills and stuff like that. So let me know down in the comments below if there's anything in particular you'd be interested in along those lines and if you enjoy this video. So thank you for watching. As always, remember to live boldly, change the world, and continue to be awesome. Bye bye. Listen!